Hey guys, this is Balu from Balu Prime and once again welcome you all back for an exciting tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how we can add CGA animated flag or flapping flag into a live footage using Blender easily. So hope you guys will find this tutorial useful but before going to that if you end up liking this video, please click on that like button to share this content and if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing my channel and support me. And by the way, if you like short 3D simulation videos, you can check out my second channel, link in the description. So now without any further ado let's start today's video so here you can say i'm using blender 3.1 nice so first of all let me click on this plus icon come to this vfx and change this to motion tracking so from here we can load our footage so cl simply click on this open and select the footage so here i think i got the footage here so simply select the footage and open clip so here I got this footage from pixels.com download link in the description okay so first of all come to this render settings scroll down color management and this view transform change it to standard after that come to this output properties so here start and end frame is set to 250 but I want the total frames of this footage so in order to get that simply click on this set scene frames so now you can see we got the 360 frames which is total length of this footage so after that we need to match the resolution and fps so resolution is 1920 by 1080 so it is matching but fps is 23.98 so we need to change the fps to 23.98 okay so once this is done click on this prefetch it will load all these frames into the memory cache and by the way if all the frames are not loaded into the system or into the cache memory come to this edit options preferences system so from here we need to increase this memory cache limit so here i have increased this to 7.5 gigs so depending upon your ram availability you can increase this one after that save those preferences close and again click on this prefetch so all the frames will be loaded so now we can have the preview nicely okay so here we need to track the footage as you can see the camera is not static we are getting this rotation everything here so first of all in this kind of footages where we want to add any 3d elements we need to track that camera so in blender we can do that in manual way or in automatic way so simply i will show you the manual way first so let me select a high contrast area so before do that if your footage is blurred Come to this tracking settings, change it to blurry footage and also enable this normalize option. So now select any contrasted area. So for example, if I select this here, so hold control key and left click to add a marker. Alt S for such area. Now come to this track options here. Here you can see the track marker. From here also we can adjust the track position. So once the track position is set, you can click on this icon here or else press ctrl plus t to track forward so now we have tracked a single marker so in order to work in blender for tracking we need to have minimum eight trackers so for manual process we need to select any eight tracking points and we need to track them correctly so here i will not be doing this manual process so let me undo all these things okay so i will do this in automatic way i will let the blender to decide the tracking features so in order to do that simply click on this detect features make sure you on this first layer and click on this detect features so here you can see blender has detected so many contrasted points as track markers so once all these track markers are selected simply press ctrl plus t to track them forward so now you can see the tracking is started and here few of the track markers are getting off so we need to delete them so first of all let me change this to 360 here okay so here i don't want this track markers so i will select this track markers this one this one all these four track markers these are getting off so delete those track markers and also here these two track markers getting off so select those two trackers delete those track markers now and also here this is getting off let me select this select this one and delete this track marks also here also we got this two select that and delete and 
this tracker also and let me delete this two track more cursor okay so now i think we got the tracking done so let me press a to select all the trackers here so after that we need to solve the camera so in order to solve the camera come to the solve options and simply click on the solve camera motion so here you can see we got a solve error of 0.39 pixels which is really good so anything less than one pixels will be okay and by the way if you got an error more than one pixels we need to reduce that one so one thing we can do is we can see the error of each tracking point so in order to see that click on this clip display and enable this info option so now if we select any track point here it will show the error so for this track point it is 0.8 pixels so if i select this one it is 0 0.20 pixels so for this it is 0 0.61 so let me delete this pixel okay so now again let me solve camera and now it is reduced to 0.38 so in this way we can select the highest track point that has more error and we can reduce this solve error value okay so once that is done we need to set this scene as a background so for that scroll down here we can say setup tracking scene simply click on this setup tracking scene we'll get the scene created here nice so if i move on to the layout let me show you so if i click on this layout here so here we will not be able to see the footage but if i play this we can see the movement of the camera here you can see the camera is moving okay so in order to view our footage we need to see through this camera so we need to click on this camera icon here so now we can see we got our footage here okay so if i play this now the tracking is not looking that much solid it seems like our 3d scene which is plain and cube are floating here so for that we need to set the floor and origin so again move on to this track motion motion tracking sorry so after that first we need to set the floor as per the perspective so here i think let me press a to get all the keyframes sorry all the motion trackings and let me disable this info option so here we need to select any three track markers that resembles the perspective of our floor so for example if i select this track marker hold shift key and if i select this one and if i select this one this may create the perspective of the floor so select any three track markers that resembles the perspective of the footage and click on this floor icon so now the scene is moved to this position so once the floor is created now let's move back to this layout once again see through camera and now if i play this we can see that these 3d elements are staying in its position so our floor is created perfectly so let me change this to 360 so that we can see all the 360 frames okay so now if i move here you can see we got our scene sticking in its position nice so now we need to set the origin point so again come to this motion tracking so for origin point we need to have one tracking motion or one track point selected so for that i will select this track marker here and i will set this as origin so now whole entire 3d objects will be moved to that position so if we add any 3d elements it will be appear from this position only so now again move back to this layout and let me play this and before that let me reduce the scaling so select the plane and select the cube once again press s and reduce the scaling here so now if i play this we can see we are having our object staying in its position nice so here the origin point is at this position so i want the origin point to be at the center of this scene so let me select the camera press g y and let me move this scene here completely so that our origin point comes at the center of this footage so let me select the camera once again come to this camera options background image and opacity let me increase this to one nice so now we can see we got our scene ready nice so now let me hide out this ground plane before that let me select the cube and let me place it onto the plane so select the cube let me come out of this camera view 
press 1 for front view and let me place the cube just above to this ground plane so i think this is fine hold control key and now it is staying on its plane so now let me move back to this camera view okay so now we got our cube onto the plane so i think we need to adjust the rotation a bit so let me select the camera once again press r y and let me r x and rotate it here so i think this will be good next z y and let me place this here okay so i think this is looking good now okay fine so now let's work on the flag so for that first let me hide out this ground plane and also this cube here okay and also make sure to disable in render viewport also so simply click on this render viewport options disable in render and this ground plane also disable in render or else we will get this plane and cube visible while we render okay. so now let's move back to the solid viewport so now let's create our flagpole and flag so first of all come to this add mesh select this cylinder press s and reduce the scaling so this will be the pole press s z and increase the scaling in z axis and also let me place this just above to the grid so i think this much of length is enough let me check through camera so yeah length is enough but i think i need to reduce the thickness so let's come out of this camera view so press s shift z and reduce the scaling so that the z length will not be reduced so i think this much is enough let me check through this okay so pole scaling is fine now let's create the flag so let me come back to this view so come to this add mesh select the plane rx90 and let me place the flag here press s reduce the scaling and press s x and increase the scaling in x axis so i think this much of length is enough let me check through camera and it is facing that side so i need to move or rotate the flag on y axis so let me select this one and hold ctrl key and rotate the flag to y axis and let me move this here press 7 for top view let me rotate this exactly okay and also let me place this here okay so now if i see through camera we are getting the flag this side and let me just here only so i want the flag to be flapping or animating this side so okay so after that select the plane once again sorry so select the plane once again press tab to edit mode right click subdivide and let me add subdivisions of 60 cuts and again press tab to exit the edit mode so now let's add cloth properties onto this plane so select the plane come to this physics properties apply cloth physics onto this plane and now if i play this you can see the cloth will be falling down so we need to restrict the cloth or plane to be falling down so in order to make that select the plane press tab to edit mode first let me select only these vertices so let me move to extra view and select only two vertices here if you want or else you can select all the vertices here like this so here i will be selecting only two vertices and below two vertices here okay so after selecting those vertices come to this object data properties in vertex group click on this plus icon and if you want you can change the name here let me change it to pins and assign them so after assigning these vertices to this pin group come to this physics property once again scroll down come to this shape options in this pin group we need to select the pins which we have created now so now again press tab to exit the edit mode so now if i play this the plane will not be falling down okay so let me disable this x remote so select the cloth right click shade smooth select the pole add collision property to the pole now select the plane scroll down and enable self collision options so come to this collisions and apply self collisions and also friction i will reduce this to 0.1 
and distance let me reduce this to 0 0.001 and now if I play this we can say we got our flag ready nice so now let's add a force field so that the flag will be flapping or animating so in order to do that come to this add options force field add wind here so let me rotate this in this direction let me move this and let me place this here and strength i will increase this to 2500 and let me check so if i play this so this force is not enough so i will increase this to 10000 and let me check this value so still 10000 value is not enough so we need to increase the value here a bit so the strength is acting but i need to have this wind effect more so i will change this to 50000 so this is a manual checking process we need to see which strength or how much strength works on the scene so now if i play this okay this much of strength is working for the flag to flap so if you want to increase further you can do that so for this scene i will leave this to 50000 strength okay so once you are happy with the animation or this flapping of flag effect we need to bake the simulation first so in order to bake the simulation select the plane or cloth scroll down and come to this cache options so here simulation is only for 250 frames but our total footage frames is 360 so i will change this to 360 okay after that simply click on this bake button so it may take time depending upon the length of the footage or frames what we have selected so here this baking is done okay so once the bake is done first of all let me save this project i don't have any get crashes so let me save this first and save blend file okay nice so first of all let me add a base for this pole so without base it will not look good so again go to this add mesh select a cylinder so press s z and reduce the scaling in z axis and press s shift z and reduce the scaling here and press one and let me place this just above to the plane so i think this much of base is fine or else let me reduce the z axis y okay so let me see through the camera fine so that much of base is enough nice so now let's move on to this material viewport so come to this material viewport here so now let's add a blender logo onto this you can use any image if you want here so select the plane click on the shading tab so click on this plus icon here so you'll get this normal principal bsdf select this principal bsdf and press ctrl plus t for node wrangler and by the way if you are not enabled node wrangler go to this edit options preferences and in add-ons look for node so by default this node wrangler will be unchecked enable it save those preferences close it after that select this principal bsdf and press ctrl plus t so from here we can select any of the image or texture you want so here i will select a blender logo only so let me select that one so here i got the logo open image and now you can see we got the blender logo on this flag so in the same way i will add some materials onto this pole and base so now we can see we got some materials onto the base and pole so if i play this now we can say we got our flag flapping in the live footage but here we are missing the shadows so now let's work on the shadows so in order to add shadows into this kind of environments where we have added cg elements first we need to add a light sunlight so by default here we got a light here which is a which is not a sunlight i think it is point light so i will convert this light into sun so select the light and change it to sun okay and no change is happening because we are not in render viewport so let me move on to this render viewport here 
So now you can see we got that sunlight. So press Z, Z and let me bring it down. And we want the shadows to be falling on this side. So first of all, let's make our scene visible in this render viewport. So in order to make the complex world properties, color, click on this icon here, add environment texture. So from here, we need to select an HDRA, which is a 360 image of our footage. So currently I don't have 360 or HDR image. So I will use the same footage here. It is not a correct way to do since I don't have that. I will be adding the footage only. And that means an image of our footage. So open and let me select the footage. So here I will be selecting this one only and open. So here we got the image here. So first of all, let me come to this film options and make it transparent. So now we got our original footage visible in the scene. So now select the light, light options and let me reduce the strength to five. Okay. So now in order to get our shadows visible in the scene, first we need to add a ground plane. So by default, we got a background ground plane here. I will not be using that. I will be creating a new one. So go to this add mesh selective plane, press S and increase the scaling. So now you can see we got the shadows. So here I want to move the shadows in this direction, in this opposite way. So select the light, press R and simply rotate the light here. So I think this will work. You can see we got our shadows in this direction. So after this, we need to render this out in cycles in ev we will be getting this plane visible so in the order to render these cg elements we need to use cycles engine only so let me come to this render properties and change this render engine to cycles so select gpu if your device got gpu here now select the plane come to this visibility options come to this visibility options and make it as a shadow catcher so that we will get only shadows visible here. Nice, fine. So now let me show you how to render this scene out. So same, come to this render properties and cycles. We need to select the cycles and here maximum samples is by default set to 4096, which takes a hell out of time for me. So I will reduce the samples count to 10 and okay. Make sure this denoise option is enabled. If you want to enable motion blur, you can enable motion blur or else you can disable that one. I will leave motion blur only. So after that, come to this output properties. So let it be full HD, but percentage I will reduce to 50% so that the render will be a bit fast. Now enable this render region, crop to render region. Frame rate is okay. Frame start and end is one to three sixty fine. And output, we need to select a folder where we can save the output files. So let me select an output folder here. So here I have selected a folder where I can save the output files. So file format, you can directly render this out in video format. If you want to render in video format, select this MPEG video. But I will suggest you to render in JPEG or PNG because we can stop the render at any moment and we can continue the render after some time. So let me select JPEG only and quality 100%. So I think these much of settings are fine. So after that, come to this render options and click on this render animation. So first it will render out the flag or 3D elements. Later our footage will be rendered. So this may take time depending upon the samples, quality, frame rate, everything matters here. And also the specs of our device. So in this way, we can add CG animated or flapping flag into a live footage using Blender easily. So hope you guys have learned something new from this tutorial. If you have learned anything new, please like, share and subscribe my channel to support me. So we'll meet in the next video. Until then, signing off. Take care. Bye.